Hello everyone, welcome to Club Deck Corner here on Club at 22, the Rangers podcast. This week, can Rangers achieve a quarter-final and a semi-final in the same week? Let's hope Benfica hibs it more than hibs hibs it. Yeah. Uh, I am Scott Carney and joining me tonight is a full house. It's been a while, I think, since we've had a full house. Ali Pearson, first of all, how are you, mate? Not too bad. I see Haymarch is still on his holidays again. Yes, he's 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 on he's I think he's on his final written now, mate. His final written, he's on. <laughs> he is. He's on his amber card. But um, no, good to be here. And then, um, I I can't wait for Thursday night. That is going to be absolutely electric, at Ibrooks. Absolutely, yeah. We'll come to that. Jamie McKay, how are you, mate? No bad, lads. Good to see you all. I'm still I'm still enjoying the absolute sheer meltdown right across Scottish football because Rangers are good again. I mean, it's just it's a it's a lovely complaint to have, isn't it? When we are playing football. The media seems to really go for us, but I'm enjoying it. And as Ali said, yeah, looking forward to Thursday as well. We'll also come to that tonight as well, I would imagine. And Nicky Oven, how are you? Very good, thank you, mate. Likewise, good to see a, a full house tonight. And uh, it's nice to do a Tuesday pod with a, a massive European fixture to look forward to in just under what just over 40, under 48 hours, given the weird kickoff time. That's right, mate. Yeah, just under 48 hours and we'll be at the... Uh, oh, we'll nearly know, actually. We'll know if we're through or we're not about this time, half seven. Ah, that's about right. So, yeah, um, looking forward to that, definitely. We'll we'll come on to it. Um, shameless plug, as always, to support this podcast to reach the next level, you can join the YouTube channel for as little as 99p a month. You can also buy the podcast a coffee and join the Coffee by Legend membership via buymeacoffee.com. Thank you to all our coffee buyers, all our members, all our channel members. It really is appreciated your continued support for us. But if you don't want to do that, then all I can ask you to do, to, the biggest thing that you can do to help the channel is to subscribe to the channel and like the video. That would be absolutely the magic we're on the charts to six thousand subscribers now so if you could do that that would be very much appreciated so tonight gentlemen we'll start off with the the hibs um victory on sunday to get us through to the um semi-final of the scottish cup which of course will be against hearts we'll come on to that shortly ali nicky and i done a um a reaction video on Sunday after the game. So just what was your overall feelings of of the game, mate? Your overall thoughts on the game? I'll be honest, going into the game, I was slightly nervous because of the effort, or the energy they got taken out of us on Thursday night. I thought we looked a bit leggy. When he overly shocked that he played the exact same team because we are down at the bare bones, I did think Kamar Roof could possibly start up front. He did mention Ryan Jack was to start, but Ryan Jack is injured again. <laughs> he was now overtaking Kamar Roof. It's one of the worst injured hey, players at the moment. Hey, careful, <laughs> careful. So, um, I, I wasn't overly surprised, um, Carney, but to be honest, reactions on the game, I, I thought it was quite routine for Rangers, to be honest, going to Easter Road. Easter Road's a place we've not struggled at all in the last wee while. Hibs play quite a, an open game when they play Rangers, which suits us most of the time. Um, overall, I thought Rangers were very good, to be honest. Um, Hibs, a couple of wee flurries in the game for me. Never really, apart from Jack Butlin trying to score an own goal and the save he made for a free kick, which was for the cameras, he didn't really have much to do. And I thought Rangers probably should have scored a few more. And obviously, Hibs lost their heads with the, with the red cards, but I just thought it was quite routine for Rangers. And it was... Um, I, I thought it was an enjoyable game to watch. For the neutral, I thought it was good. Obviously, red cards, etc. But I, I was just delighted to be in the heart for the for the semi final. Yeah, Jamie, we always in the in the hinds, in hindsight, every time you, you look back at a game, obviously when you watch a game, you're always full of emotion. It's always the same when you're watching Rangers. But after you once you analyse it, you kind of watch it back. You're going, we we're never really in any great danger. Okay, Rangers weren't playing amazing free flowing football, and we mm-hmm. were aided by Hibs losing their heads, there's absolutely no doubt about that. However, even when they were on top for that 20, 20 minutes or so in the second half, I don't think they were really troubling us. I don't think they were really no. troubled Rangers. And if anything, it was a professional performance by Rangers and I will take that professional performance for the re- every game for the rest of the season. I mean, I'll agree with Ali. I think uh, I was I was shocked to see the lineup and uh, an unchanged lineup from come on. But for us to put the, the application in uh, after do you know what I mean? A short period, having played in Europe, 
just goes to show that the, the fitness levels are already rising under Clement. Imagine what it's going to be like under a full pre-season. So, no, I was I was delighted. I really don't... I, I'm with Ali again. I don't think they really troubled us. I think it was about 10, 15 minutes at the start of the second half. Saying that, they didn't really have too many clear-cut chances. And then really, like, real bad ill discipline. They've just shot themselves in the foot because they could have been in the ascendancy and it was still 1-0, so it's, it's all to play for. So, really, they, have, they only have themselves to blame. But, as well... We we made that a very professional, clear cut performance as well, and and I think yeah, I think we were always going to be in the heart for the semis. Yeah, Nicky, I think we when yourself and I done the reaction after the game, and I think we we kind of said that. I think there was obviously periods of the game where Rangers that weren't and weren't the top team. Um, Hibs were in the game. I thought we did struggle at points, but I think you would be nitpicking to be too upset with the fact that you're away from Easter Road again with another two 0 win. And as Ali said, and as I think I mentioned on Friday actually on the podcast that. We, we we are beginning to get it out of our heads that Easter Road's a difficult place to go. We always say, oh, Easter Road's a tough place to go because there's been some high scoring games there over the over the course of the past how many seasons. So you, you kinda you have that in your mind about um it being a kind of difficult place to go. But so far I think I I I've not done my homework that well, but I think we've won at least the last three or four times we've went to Easter Road now. You can't ask for much more than Rangers going out there doing the job after the efforts we put in on on Thursday night. I was I was delighted the fact that we won two 0 and we're through. Yeah, I think I mean the key thing for us that we spoke about as well was that kind of caveat, wasn't it? That we had a really difficult fixture at Easter Road. We then have obviously the return leg at Benfica. We then get Dundee in the league. Nobody's asked about performances. It kind of goes back to the the, the Hearts and the Kilmarnock in the St Johnson game. No, nobody is asked about performances. All we want is is to progress in the Scottish Cup to the semis, which we've done. Go to the quarterfinals against Benfica and then pick up three points on the road in Dundee. So, yeah, I, I mean, I would agree. I think um, we we kind of controlled it without controlling it. If that if that makes sense, I don't I don't ever feel as if we were out of control of the match. Yeah, I think you're right. There were periods where we were quite sloppy. I felt as if Hibs were were quite dangerous on transition a couple of times. I think we were quite lucky. Hibs, Hibs up front were, were really really poor. I thought the final ball and and their decision making in the final third was 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 really really poor and and we kind of got away with it. So um, I, I think one of the most pleasing aspects for me, Scott, is I'd probably echo what, what Ali and, and and Jamie have said is that Clement talks a lot about the four pillars about what he wants to instill in this team. And I think the mental and physical is is, is ones that we're, we're seeing massive improvement in. You, th- you think about the mental and the mentality that he's implemented in this team. I think Jamie alluded to the physical aspect, what we're running with 12 and 13 bodies. And, and, and we look the fitter of the two teams, to be honest, against against Hibs. And, 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 and even on that mental side as well, Hibs let their frustration get the better of them. We didn't. We kept professional... And, and, and we, we reaped the rewards, right? They lost the head, they, they lost two bodies. And by that point, that, that that was the chance gone, right? We could put our foot on a ball, we could then control it. And and, and we killed the game with a brilliant goal with Fabio Silva at the end. So, no, I think, again, with the power of hin- hindsight, when you watch it back, it was one that we never really lost control on. We were never really in danger of, of losing it. And I, like you, I've, I've not seen the specific stats, but I did see something on Twitter today that suggests in the last eight times we've been at Easter Road, We've drawn two and I think one six, right? So we've been really, really successful there. And that probably goes beyond the, the eight fixtures as well. Yeah, um, absolutely. Perf- perfect kind of sum up of uh, of the situation, mate. And there's no doubt. Jamie, I'll come back to you because you mentioned it at the start of the podcast, the, the continued meltdown that's happening because Rangers are top of the league and people don't like seeing Rangers top of the league. And it's because we're maybe a wee bit good at football again and we're not the, we're not the team going from um, kind of poor result from to poor result, we are we are very much got a manager that's steering us very much in the right direction. He's got a response out of this squad where we thought a lot of them were not going to not going to be a future for us going forward. A lot of them have made a stake to remain at the club, uh, but the the meltdown does continue. And it, obviously, it started all really all started off on Sunday with the commentating on via play by Michael Stewart, who is a pathetic human. He really is a pathetic human. He's not a 
an expert in football in any shape or form. He doesn't even know the rules of football. Never mind, um, never mind being an expert in in the game or having a successful career, for that matter. But it's it's all a sign for me that things are going the right way. The fact that everybody saying that it wasn't a red, it blatantly was a red. The fact that people are saying that it wasn't a penalty, it blatantly was a penalty. This is the narrative that will continue for the rest of the season while Rangers are in a commanding position in the league, where it's still in the Scottish Cup, we're still in the Europa League. We are holding the coefficient up again for Scottish football in Europe. This is all part of it, mate. And it's the, the famous saying that will live long with us is no one likes us and we don't care. I was just about to come out of that if you didn't say it there, by the way. But like, no, you're bang on the money. And I think the only saving grace for us as Rangers fans is the fact that Clermont will be drilling at these players outside noise. Don't even bother thinking about it. Don't bother thinking about it. I mean, you mentioned Michael Stewart there. It's just he's he's always be he's always had a deep vendetta against Rangers. I think when it's going back to studio and Neil Lennon's even agreeing with some of the decisions, you know that he's that he's chatting absolute bubbles. Do you know what I mean? So and and the thing the thing that he was saying about the, the tackle and I think it was Diamandi on Boyle and he was chat he was trying to compare the likeness to the one on to the one on Sterling for the penalty. Yeah. And you're just thinking there's it's nothing like it. We can all we can all clearly see it's nothing like it. So yeah look the, the the longer this goes on and it will it will go on as we continue to be at the peak of the of the table we continue to do uh, business in Europe it's, it's always going to be the case but it was always the case when we were successful before so we just got to put up with it and just laugh it off as per usual yeah michael stewart as well trying to claim that um, the Diamond, Diamande one was a foul when it wasn't a foul because he doesn't touch him. Boyle yeah. falls under his own weight. It's not. It's not even close. He is just an idiot. He really is a full class idiot. Um, I could say more sweary words than that about him, but I won't. I'll try and compose myself. It's a, it's a Tuesday evening, Ali. This is the narrative that will continue though. Um, the Rangers being on top. Uh, for me, mate, a lot of it's. <sighs> Not enjoyable, enjoyable, yeah, probably enjoyable. I quite like it because it means that people are t- sitting up and taking note of us again, and we're starting to be we're starting to be taken a bit more seriously. There has a few times, mate, we've reached a false summit, but this this without being too over the top and getting too carried away, this does feel slightly different under Clement this time round. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, one of Michael Stewart. He's Michael Stewart. He's just a controversial character. That's what he wants to be. He's a similar one that like uh, like Chris Sutton. They want to be controversial. <clears throat> Michael Stewart has a, a deep hatred towards Rangers, and when Rangers are doing well, he doesn't like it. Um, uh, you, some of the things he was coming out with was baffling, Carney. I mean, <laughs> I watched it in the pub, and some of the language towards Michael Stewart was was very colourful. Colourful, colourful, yes. yes. Including myself, but uh, to be honest, it, it made to the atmosphere in the pub and everyone shouting. So I actually quite enjoyed it. To be fair, when he was coming out with all this garbage. Um, but I, Cl- Clement's got a, <clears throat> aye, he's, he's, he's got belief, belief in the players and he's got belief in the support now and, and we're all behind him and the, the Motherwell game, which was a, which we never seen coming, but we were all waiting for a bump somewhere. That was the, the one where we didn't expect, but they've came back Rangers and responded. He always said, when we have the bump in the road, I want to see how these players respond. Christ, you couldn't get a harder game going away with Fika. We did extremely well out there, Carney, with limited players. Then you go a couple of days later away to Easter Road in a cup, took care of them convincingly. So they've bounced back these players, and we've seen it before from them when they've, they've had a wee bump before under Clement. Celtic game, they went in that run, 10, 11 wins in the trot, whatever it was. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got, I've got faith in the players, and I've got faith in him. You obviously you'll come on to injuries, Carney. That, that's the one concern for me going forward, which you'll come on to. But so far, so good for me. Yeah, Nicky, that's the thing. Ali, uh, Ali is um, Ali is spot on. Everybody thought the wheels had fell off when we got the defeat under Motherwell, and to respond to the way we have a very impressive um, draw with Benfica away. Even some of that lot were saying to me through gritted teeth, like that's that's a hell of a result that you've got 
you have got out there. And then to have, a, as I say, a professional 2-0 win over Hibs at Easter Road. Yes, they went down to nine men, but that's nothing to do with what Rangers done. Um, it's all about them losing their heads and it's just a professional performance. And all of a sudden, people are going, this isn't the same as before. And that all adds to the narrative that we'll have. And we're coming up to an old firm, mate. So be prepared for Stubbs, for Jackie McAmara, all to come out and say that Rangers have had 450 million penalties this season for um, getting knocked over by a feather. All of that is coming. We all know it's going to come. The pressure is going to get ramped up on the refs to try uh, try turn them against us, uh, which is laughable it is when you look at the stats. But for me, mate, even if the players, as Jamie said, I would imagine Clement saying is, don't take too much notice of the outside noise. So even if they are, me as a player personally, I'd be loving it. I'd be going, well, let's make things even worse for them and let's go on and win things. Yeah, just on the meltdown, I am I am awaiting the PLZ conveyor belt to, to kick into gear. <laughs> this week I was I was fully expecting ex Hibbies, Scott Brown, Derek Ryerton and Lee Griffiths to come on and give their opinion on the Rangers Hibernian game. But we've not seen that yet, but there's still a bit of time, I suppose, to get these guys ruled out for their opinion. Um but no, I think I um Part, part of the challenge we've had with a squad is we let one bad result turn into two, three, four. Yeah. And we've seen it particularly after winter breaks, haven't we? Where we've kind of, we've kind of, not necessarily set the pace, but we've we've kept up with Celtic's charge for certainly first parts of seasons. We we tend to see the winter break and then very quickly we allow one bad result turn into to a lot. Um, and 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 Ali Ali's right that this was all about the reaction. We've spoken about it for weeks. Clement has mentioned that there would be a bump in the road. Even he himself was quite surprised, I think, that, it, that it's taken this long, given the resources that he's working with. Um, but, aye, to, 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 to yourself and Ali's point, it, it's, it's, it's been pretty much flawless since, right? To go to Benfica, I mean, I think we would agree. We all came away pretty disappointed that we didn't win the game. Um, we all, we were all, and, and that just shows where we are, I think, the minute and, and, and what we're kind of doing in Europe to to, to go to Benfica and, and be disappointed that you didn't win, I, I think just shows where we are and where the squad is at at the minute. And then yeah, obviously the Hibs game um was was as professional as, as you like, right? It, as the boys say, it was it was good from a neutral. There was a lot of events kind of kicking about. Um but it it, it was a, it was a it was a strong result from Rangers, a strong performance from Rangers, not their best certainly but you take into consideration what we're working with. We're, 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 we're leaning on 12 and 13 bodies. Six and seven of them have got a serious amount of minutes in their legs over the last three, four weeks. You think about John Lundstrom, Tav, Goldson, John Souter. They've played pretty much 90 minutes in all of these games. Dessers probably as well has played the vast majority, particularly since Silva has been moved out to the left and they can't kind of interchange them anymore. So... Under circumstances, it was all about the reaction and, and, and so far we've ticked both boxes and, and that's the way we need to continue. Yeah, it is, and let the meltdown continue. As I say, I thoroughly, I do enjoy it. Some of the comments are, are laughable. I've seen a picture on Kerryfield Meltdown today about infringement in the box. It should never have stood. I think Silver's in the box by about an inch at the very most at an inch and he's not even involved in the goal so <laughs> you're like what are you, what are you actually talking about I don't, know, yeah. I don't know if you've seen this Scott by the way but a Rangers fan dug up the original poster you see if you actually look at the video it's actually a Hibs player that pushes him into it oh is it so it, it made this guy look even more of an ass, by the way that <laughs> Fabio Silva was in it because it was actually a Hibs player that pushed him in so superb uh, Superb, it's what it's all about, really is what it's all about. They're, they're a, a, a midges boy here away, as they say, from, from getting the Sharks out the Clyde, that's for sure. Ali, the next round we've been drawn against Hearts. The uh, fixtures are due to take place 20th or 21st of April. If we get through in the next round um, of the, the the Europa League, we will be the Sunday because we will be playing the second leg of the quarterfinal on the Thursday. Um, beat Celtic in the final to win the treble, mate? <laughs> I, I said to you off camera I, I wanted them in the semis if I'm being honest about it yeah we've got a lot of injuries and they've got a few injuries as well to be fair but it's still five six weeks away um, for that semi-final I would have liked them then Sky are probably rubbing their hands because they wanted Celtic Rangers potentially in the final they've, they've maybe got that but out of the 
out of Aberdeen and, and Hearts. For me, Carney, Hearts is the one I would take. Uh, Aberdeen's one of these teams that we've really struggled against this year and in previous years. We don't seem to hump Aberdeen. So, always, well, you've seen the cup final. It was a 1 0 win for Rangers. So, Hearts are one of these teams. Obviously, we beat them 5 0 a few weeks ago. And we've played them a few times at, um, at Hamden recently and done well. So, yeah, I was uh, I was pleased with that. But I, if we get to the final and you're, you're there for a, for a potential treble or a quadruple, um, oh, oh. it's um, aye, it's mouthwatering when you think of things like that. But it's it's a long way down the road, Carney, because there's a lot oh, of important games even before we get to this semi-final. But... It's good to be there. And I was going to say it's good to be back at Hamden, but as we all know, we hate it's, Hamden. I hate um, it. Yes, and obviously the dreaded um, getting onto the Rangers website as well. They'll probably do it in terms of tears with my years and go on at a certain time slot and all that. So I'd be intrigued to see that. But um, no, I look forward to being there. Yeah, yeah. As I say, so it's. I mean, we don't. It's good to get to Hamden because of what it means in, in terms of you're getting a step close. To, Step closer to a trophy, but I'm the same. I, I I don't like going, even though I still go. Um, but I I, I I don't particularly enjoy going. Jamie, um, happy enough with the draw, and Hearts have asked for a fifty fifty split, as you would expect. At least the teams outside the old firm seem to be making a habit of this now. What's your opinions on that as well? Mm, happy with the draw. I mean, I'm with Ali. I would have preferred to get Celtic in the semi just to just to get out of the way. In, in terms of form as well, I think it'd be coming at a good time after the seventh. Uh, but we've got Hearts. It's a, it's a, it's. Do you know what I mean? It's a decent enough game. We, uh, we've not really struggled against them this season. They've not, they've not really turned up against us, which is a good omen for us. Um, so yeah, no, I think overall, overall, good draw. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not wanting to give it the the uh, treble quadruple chat just yet, boys. But I, I might be, I might be in a few weeks' time. <laughs> what was your Jimmy I, I said mentioned about Hearts asking for a 50-50 split do you agree with teams outside the old former green I will asking requesting this should there be maybe something in place where okay you can have a 50-50 allocation but you have a set date and to sell them and if you don't they will be going to either Rangers yeah. or Celtic that's usually the way it works out well they're perfectly entitled to ask for half obviously because it's a big semi-final but I mean really Having watched a wee bit of the game against Celtic at Tincastle, all their seats weren't full either, so mm-hmm. I doubt they'd be able to fill half a hand. And you don't know, you don't know, they, they, they might, but I think you're bang on, mate. What needs to happen is it needs to be a certain cut-off date and then the tickets will obviously come back to us. I think the last time we played them at Hamden, uh, it was, yeah, it was. It's, it seemed to be more of a sort of 70-30, 65-35, something like that. So, I think it'll probably be the same, but look, I think in the interest of fairness, I think you've got to offer them half and then and then give them a cut off time for it. Yeah, Carney, I would. Go. Sorry, so I was going to say, Carney, that when we played um, Aberdeen in the final, I know it wasn't Hearts, but Aberdeen in the final, Rangers got it wasn't a fifty fifty split then. Rangers got the majority of the tickets, so I don't think it will be a fifty fifty split. Yeah, I suppose that the, I was going to. I think it's it'll split opinions because I, for one, don't think they should get it because if they can't fill their own stadium on a weekly basis, then why why would they expect a half the allocation of Hamden just because it's a, a final and everybody that's not been to a Hearts or a semi final or everybody that's not been to a Hearts game that's a Hearts fan for the past four years gets a ticket for me that's not fair but again that's with my blue tinted glasses on but I do think Nicky if there is going to be a 50-50 allocation I do think it has to be okay you can have it but by this date you have you have to on that date to sell your 50-50 allocation if you don't they will be returned and they will be allocated to Rangers or if it be Celtic and that, if it was the other way around yeah, um, I think firstly, I probably, I probably agree with the guys. It was quite strange that um, when when the draw was ongoing at Aberdeen with the, the one team, I really didn't. They weren't much the same as Ali. I, I would much, it's weird, right? I would much rather play Celtic than I would Aberdeen. Um, and I think I said that after the 2-1 game um, where we beat them a few weeks ago, it, it pains me that we struggle against them so much because they're, they're dog shit, for lack of a better phrase. <laughs> I, I, I just wish we would just give them a doing and put them in their place. And I know there's been a handful over the years, but we don't do it consistently enough. I think if you look at Hearts and Hibs, 
we have a far better record against them, particularly Hearts kind of Hamden. So, um, no, I'm, I'm I'm pleased with it. Likewise, I would have been probably similar if we'd drawn Celtic. As I say, the key thing for me was was probably avoiding Aberdeen. I think on the um, the tickets, I kind of agree with you, Scott. Um, I think if you look at Hearts and their average attendance on a week by week basis, or not week by week, but when they're at Tynecastle, they probably get sixteen, seventeen thousand people. Why should they then get twenty five thousand? I think that with the exception of Rangers and Celtic, I think if Rangers and Celtic meet in the final, you do a fifty fifty. I think it's fair, but yeah. I, I think you, you almost need to look at who's missing out. And I think if you look at Rangers, there's fifty thousand people in Ibrox every second week. If we only get a 50-50 split, there's 25,000 people there that's missing out. Whereas, as you say, Scott, for Hibs, you then have seven, 8,000 people who are day trippers, not interested in going to the run-of-the-mill games. They're only interested in a cup final day out or a cup fi- semi-final day out. So I do think um, they are entitled to ask for it. I, I, would like to th- I would like to see some sort of, I don't know, way of working this out that goes, you know, l- looking at average attendances, Rangers maybe get kind of 35,000, for example, and, and Hibs maybe get sort of 15-ish thousand because if they get kind of 15,000, pretty much everybody that goes to Tynecastle every second week gets a ticket. You then have only maybe 15,000 Rangers fans missing out. Um, but I do get it. It, it. it does make it unfair. It's a national semi-final. Hearts are entitled, but I would echo your point, Scott. I think if, if there are to be given a 50-50 split, there is a set date. If you do not sell them by that date, um, they, they, they returned and, and Rangers get the option, but maybe don't try and do what Aberdeen done and just sell them AMD where Rangers fans end up taking over your website and buying them with maybe not my only piece of advice. <laughs> yeah, I know. Tin pot club, that's what that is, mate. That's been a tin pot club. Um, yeah, look, as I say, the, 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 it's... It's one that will run on and on. I think when there's always a, there's always going to be a split opinion on what what should happen. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see what the the footballing authorities in the country decide to do with it. But yeah, the ties due to take place twenty to twenty first. If we are in Europe still, it will be the Sunday the twenty first for it. Um, Ali, you mentioned injuries, and um, we will come on to that now. Obviously, on Sunday we lost Sterling and um, McCausland, both that have been playing um, active roles on the right hand side of our, our kind of attack. If you like. A big bit of a blow. Um, I don't know how we don't obviously don't know how serious things are now. Um, in terms of um, we've not the press conference to get any update on the squad and see where injuries are at. If we have any, any kind of set dates on returns or whether some are precautions, some are maybe not. I will say Sterling's looked bad. I think the way that he went down told you that it looked bad because he kind of immediately turned around and looked at the bench as if to say, "Oh no, um, this Mahami's gone." But I'm interested to see what you think Clement would do and also what would you do in this situation? It could require some change of formation from him because we are getting thin on the ground with players and um, maybe not players, I think there's players we could pull in but we are, we are now asking we're now asking players to play very much unnatural positions to them and not everybody is, is Sterling, for example. So what do you think Clement would do and what would you do with the injuries going forward in terms of the shape of the team and uh, the maybe the, the squad that we have available? I mean, the, I mean, the injuries at the moment are unbelievable. It was the first thing Clement said when he came in. Mm-hmm. And look, look where we are at now. And he's mentioned to, in terms of our, our pre-season, he's had a go at Beal, basically, in terms of where we are at the moment. is basically down to the, that management team, but I mean, you look at the top line, can you? Cortez out, Scott Wright out. I mean, what was wrong with Scott Wright? We've not even, we've just, he's injured all of a sudden. Um, Danilo's yeah. out, Sima's out. I know Matondo came back, and, but I was actually quite happy to see Matondo back. And that's not a weird thing to say because <laughs> it, because he's a winger and we don't have any natural pace out at the moment. because Coslin went off, Sterling, I mean, double, you can get through it. It's, it's frightening the injuries, Carney, but. I'll be honest, I think you'll look at it the way I would look at it as well, that we've got two games left. We've got Benfica Thursday, we're away to Dundee, and then we have a two-week break where I would look and I'd like to think players like Todd Cantwell will be back. I think he will be back. Maybe some other players may be back. I mean, there's the guys like Kieran Dowell and that that just go into a black hole and you never hear what's wrong with them. So it'd be interesting to see the guy, the guys that go to the press first to ask about some of these individual players. Where are they? I know Clement might keep his cards close to his chest and 
one of them will just appear out of nowhere. Um, but for me, Carney, I think he'll stick with what he's the same shape. I think he'll stick with the same team. And I think he'll say to these guys, we've got two games, just go to the well for us for two games and you've got a two-week break. Um, that's what I would be doing, Carney, for these these guys. And I know it's it's dodgy with guys like Tom Lawrence and players like that. John Lundstrom, we couldn't afford to lose him. But Ryan Jack, again, injured on for 10 minutes and he's injured again. The guy has to go in the summer. I know he's your boy, Carney, but he has to go in the summer. He is no use to Rangers. Um, but these players have to play the next two games for me, Carney. Empty the tank. They've had a wee break between Sunday and Thursday. It's not a bad break, that. Empty the tank on Thursday. The adrenaline will get them through that, the crowd. And then you've got one game left. I know it's the way Dundee. Dundee are been going all right, but we did well well last time. So for me, it's. I think it'll be pretty much the same players in the next two games. But just give everything and um, we'll see where we're at then. And the two-week break should help us. Yeah, Jamie, I think the likes of McKinnon's came in and he's looked okay, don't get me wrong. He's not really had a, a, a kind of long spell of playing in terms of minutes and to, to really make an impact. Um, he's obviously loving it. He's loving the opportunity. You need to hope that he's he's going to take it like a duck takes the water, mate, because we're probably going to need to rely on players like him to come in and do a job for us. But interesting one that Ali mentioned, um, can't well. We, I know we've got problems across the front line. Silva is playing very well on the left. I do believe Lawrence could be moved there if he has to, and Raskin could be brought into the midfield. Things like that could happen. And Cantwell is probably the one that we're all looking at, wondering when he's going to be back. However, if he comes back, example for Thursday, he's going to need to get used to playing on the right hand side because I would be shocked if if Clement doesn't play him there. Well, we're we're light for the right, aren't we? Because it looks like McCausland's going to be out till after the international. We don't know how serious uh, Sterling's hammy is. I mean, I actually heard it might not be a tear, which is probably a good thing for us. It means he might come back after the international break. Uh, I'm fancying Matondo to come in in, in the right for the next two games. Um, I think especially on Thursday, I think he's going to get some space and we know what he's like running into space. He's got plenty of pace to burn. Um, can't well. I think he put up some sort of cryptic post our week to suggest he might be making a bit of a comeback. I Back think that soon, was, yeah. I think that was maybe after these next two games, sort of after the international break. Um, but yeah, we're, we're honestly down to the bare bones. So as you say, mate, like Cole McKinnon coming in, um, he's he's been thrust into playing men's first team football, and he's and he's really he's not looked at a place at all. He's not going to be the savior, but as you say. We're down to the bare bones, so we need to start relying on these these guys. I mean, the other one was Zach Lovelace. I think I've I've heard that he's out for an or two months again. He's just been yeah. injured. I thought yeah. he would come in and help us, especially. I know you mentioned Desert Desert earlier on. Silva out, out wide to the left now. We've not got a replacement, so my man D nine is just going to keep having to just plunder on and get to the magical ten mark. <laughs> plunder on that's a perfect way to sum up Dessers plundering on up. yeah exactly. plundering on with Dessers yes absolutely Nicky your thoughts on the whole injury situation we're going to really need to pull on anybody that's available that's maybe flirted with the idea of playing on the right hand side I, I think um, we've, we have got the benefit of the international break I think the two big names for me to be honest Scott is, is Cantwell and Seema I think Seema's been out for a while but there are, I think originally Sima was expected start of April. I've seen a few reports that suggest he will be back sooner than that. So I am almost holding, kind of crossing my fingers at the minute that Sima will, will be one of the ones. He's certainly been back on the grass. I don't know if it's contact, if he's been involved with the group, etc. But I think people forget how much Sima contributed to this team. Yeah, See, when you look at the SPL top goal, goal scorer chart, Sima's still right up there. And the guy's not played for about two or three months now. Um, he contributed a lot in that sort of initial window when Clement came in. He he was he was our main player, to be honest. He was scoring all our goals. Um, so I I think him offering a bit of support across that kind of attacking three, I think Cantwell was a big loss as well. I think if you get the two of them, particularly for thinking about the old firm, start a start a kind of eight, bro. I think if you get the two of them, you've got Silva, you've got Lawrence, you've got Matondo. By that point, you'd like to think you've maybe got McCausland back as well. We don't know the long term diagnosis of of Sterling, obviously, but it's just, it's and, and, and Ali's right, Clement has taken a wee bit of a dig at Beal, hasn't he? he? He's simply not prepared the squad 
for this level of games, the amount of games that they're playing, the, the kind of breaks that they're seeing in between. But it, it's a point that I have bent your ears about since I've come on here. We need to address this in the summer with the transfer strategy. We need to be say, Ryan Jack, thanks for your services, mate. See you later. Kemar Roof, thanks for your services, mate. See you later. We need to be signing players who are robust and are not going to let us down like they do. And it's harsh to say that, right? It is harsh to say Ryan Jack and Kemar Roof are letting us down because their body is letting them down, right? They're not actively trying to let us down, but their body is letting us down as, 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 as a squad. And we need to address it in the summer. But like like the guys, I, I suspect that Matondo will come in. I think he will be the right side. I know we'll come on and do teams, but I think it will be a case of give me everything. You've got 180 minutes, ideally, assuming we don't go kind of the distance or extra time on Thursday night. Give us 180 minutes. You've then got a well, well-deserved well break for a couple of weeks. And then we kind of go again and hopefully we've got some reinforcements that can help you. That's what we have to hope for. We have to, we do have to get to this international break and then almost regroup, reset, and go again and be ready for the running. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully, we get some of these players back. That would be, that would be pucker, absolutely pucker. Uh, we'll move on to the preview of a massive game on Thursday night, one that I, I can't wait for. Uh, Rangers take on Benfica in the second leg of the round of sixteen in the Europa League. Uh, two each draw um, out in Lisbon, um, coming back to town with the tie alive, Ali. And that's really what it was all about. We are um, we're ninety minutes away from getting through to another quarter final in the Europa League, which I, I think is a remarkable achievement considering the way this that would be a remarkable achievement considering the way this season started out for us. And yeah, they don't get they don't get much bigger, mate. This is why you go to Ibrox and the bat cam is back. I am buzzing. The only time I get to be on the telly is the bat cam is back. Yeah, I've seen that on Twitter today, so I look forward to that wasn't wasn't above my head <laughs> on Thursday. Um but I know it's it's what it's about. Um can I take it for granted a wee bit in the last few years with Rangers because we've done so well in Europe Europa League, obviously got to a final, even previous to that, we were getting into the, the final like the knockout stages as well. So it's it's a big one for Rangers. Benfica's a good team. We need to remember they are a good team. I know we drew them two each out there. They'll, they'll be dangerous at Ibrox, so, um, but Rangers will know that. Um, but Benfica, I've seen they handed some um, tickets back today, so there's a few more bears on the ground for, for Thursday night. But it's there for Rangers. As I said, Carney, the, the the first leg, it does mean something, but in terms of where we are at the moment, it doesn't because it's, it's, a, it's a one-game shoot-off. I hope it doesn't go to extra time because my heart won't be able to take that. But um, yeah, what what more do the players want? They've got a full iBooks. You know what iBooks is like, Carney? I mean, that run to the final, the place was electric. The players, I think, fed off it. They'll feed off it on Thursday night. If there's any tired legs, they'll get the adrenaline off the, off the fans. But yeah, I think everyone's buzzing to be there on Thursday night. It's a bit of a, not a sideshow because the league's the be-all and end-all for me this season. But it's nice to be there, especially Europe, Rangers as well, around Europe, the name as well. We are carrying Scottish football in this coefficient points. Um, but I, I just can't wait to be there. And they've got a big chance, Carney, a huge chance of going through to the the, the next round of the of the Europa League and, and dare you dream. <laughs> dare you dream. Yeah, make his dream. I think that was the like the same when we yeah. got to the final was make his dream. And yeah, uh, we, we would be we would be we'd be bothering on that again. Um that's for sure. Jamie, um Ali makes a point there about the the the, the Ibrox crowd. We will give the team everything that we have in order for them to give us everything that they have. And what this also does as well is if we do manage to get through, if we do manage to, to beat Benfica and we get through to the, the, the quarterfinals, it gives the team even more adrenaline. It gives them that wee boost to go to the game on Sunday. Even though they are tired, they will know what they've just achieved. The away support will be huge. It will be massive in Dundee. And the, uh, it's another one of those ones where we will help you as much as we can. With the, the support will help them as much as we can. I'm just hoping it's another one of those Thursday nights, mate, where full time goes and we possibly will here. I'm feeling it. I think we we very much might. It's uh, it's. I'm feeling it. Our big bad John's gonna have his song back out. Uh, <laughs> yes, which I'll be looking forward to. It, it could be back to back. You never know. But uh, <laughs> no, I think it like the Europa for us. I mean, I, I'm I'm siding Mal here. I actually thought I kind of get. I've told you boys already. Laser focus in terms 
the league. But see now that uh, they would go further in it. I just think it's going to be a catalyst for these players and in a real positive sense. If they get a result on Thursday, as you say, mate, they'll, they'll be buzzing. And I really do think, I know we were just talking about injuries here, if we can get a couple of key players back, I think it's looking rosy for us and we've just got to keep we just got to keep plugging in and, and, and getting wins. But we all know what iBooks is like on a, on a European night and I'm absolutely buzzing to go on Thursday. Absolutely buzzing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. So we've got to get behind the team from, from the first whistle as we did Dortmund, Leipzig, Braga, we were all there those nights. So they were unforgettable nights. So let's hope it's the same again. Yeah, I mean, what you hope for, Nick, is a quick start by Rangers. If we manage to somehow get an early goal, if we start really strong, if the players are completely up for it because Ibrox is rocking, that all feeds onto the pitch, you hope, and we get an early start and it just kicks on from there and there and we will back them. And Benfica will feel it. They, If they go a goal down early on, they will know that they're up against it because of the Ibrox crowd. Um, I just say, I've, I've heard through... Um, various other people that they spoke to a few Benfica fans and they don't really fancy their chances coming to Ibrox on a Thursday night and that's the reputation that we've, we, we've built up over these past successful campaigns that we've had within the Europa League but it's it's kind of what it's all about and it's, it's why you go to games it really is and to be involved in, at, at this stage of the competition at this stage of the season it's 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 brilliant like, again you've you've kind of have to doff your hat to Clermont for being able to pull something out of the bag in order to have us in this position yeah, and I think the early goals, have, they've kind of been the blueprint for success for this team, haven't they? You think back to that Europa League run to the final. Dortmund, we scored early. Leipzig, we scored two within kind of 15, 20 minutes. I think Red Star, we were 3-0 up at half time, right? And it's the same in the league. I, I think we, we are quite a nervy fan base. I, I think we are quite nervy. I think if Rangers don't score in the first 60 minutes, we start panicking a wee bit. We, we, we do. Don't get me wrong, I think more recently we, we have got a wee bit better. There's maybe a wee bit more trust in this squad, but um, it, it has been the blueprint for success. But Benfica will be a challenge. They will be. I think I had a wee look at how they fared over the weekend. I think they won 3 1 at home. One thing I did notice um, was they rested key players. No De Maria, no Rafa Silva, no Neves, the young boy who played centre mid. Otamendi didn't play. I don't think the Brazilian centre forward played either. So they they rung the changes, which I think is a luxury that we as a, a squad just can't afford to do at the minute. You look at the Hibs game, we just couldn't make the changes right. We, we couldn't make five or six changes. We just simply didn't have the personnel there. And I think the the three the three competitions that we are still in, everything's there for us. You know what I mean? I, I think maybe there's maybe a wee bit of quality in the Europa League, right? There's some top teams in there, but Everything is there. I, I tend to think that the biggest thing that will hinder us a season is a squad and injuries. That is the biggest thing that I think will hold us back for going as far as we want to in all three of these competitions. But I, I would agree. I think one thing I did notice about the, the leg last Thursday was the players, the Benfica players, do not take criticism well. You noticed as soon as they dis misplaced a pass, they went behind 1-0, they went behind 2-1, as soon as their fans got on their back, they kept, a lot of their players went into hiding, which is surprising, right? You think of De Maria, the, the, the teams he's been at, the, the competitions he's won, a lot of their players, I felt, went into hiding a wee bit. And so you do hope that 50,000 fans at Ibrox, if we can get an early goal and take the lead, you could almost spook them into it, right? You could almost spook them into just carrying Rangers to the victory. And we have got a really strong track record. Again, you think about the that run, Going away from home, keeping the tie alive, bringing it home at Ibrox. We have a really, really strong record. So there's there's nothing to suggest right now that we don't go and beat Benfica on Thursday night and go to the quarterfinals. I love it, mate. I love that. Absolutely superb. It's a mouth-watering tie, to say the least. And yeah, I can't wait for it. Quarter to six kickoff, which is strange. Something I've never done at Ibrox before. But yeah, very much looking forward to it. So on that, Ali... Time to take a stab at what your team will be. Uh, I'll be shocked if we don't all pretty much pick the same one, to be honest, considering what we spoke about during the injuries. But yes, your team and your score prediction for Thursday night, mate. Yeah, Thursday I'm, evening. I'm, Thursday evening, sorry. Yeah, I mean, there's not much to pick from, so I agree. I think we'll be shocked if we don't all have the same team, to be honest. Um, Tav, Goldson, obviously Butler and goal. Tav, Goldson, Suter. Gilmaz, Lundstrom, Diamandi, Lawrence, 
Silva on the left was just, I'll tell you what, see him in that left hand position. Superb. Position, honestly. Superb. Brilliant player out there. Um, I agree with Jamie. The best young Welshman we all know, Rabi Matondo on the right, because I do agree with Jamie. He will get space. He's better on the left, Matondo, but he's, he has played on the right for us, Matondo. Um, so I'd play Matondo on the right. And I didn't think he was very good against Hibs, which for a wee disagreement in the group chat. Um, but I'm going with Jamie's man, D9, to start. The reason behind that is because if this does go to extra time, I think Kamar Roof's the perfect guy to have to bring on, um, potentially. So I'll leave Kamar Roof on the bench for that. I think Benfica will score, but I think we'll score. 2-1 Rangers within the 90 minutes. Dessers to score first. Yeah, that's exactly the same as me, mate. Generally, I'm not even, I'm not even just trying to be funny and agreeing with you. That's exactly the same team as me. I think Benfica will score as well, but I do think we will get an early goal. Uh, and I'm going for, I'm going for James Tavernier to score, but I'm going for him to score from open play, not from a free kick, not from a penalty. Back post. Tav, Tav likes these kind of occasions. This is what Tavernier is all about. He absolutely loves it, and he, he a back post goal from James Tavernier after a, a red van cross is what I'm I'm expecting from him. But yeah, two one for me as well, mate. Within the ninety minutes, and I think it'll seize through. But the team's exactly the same. Jamie, your team and your score. You get you lot are going to be shocked at this, by the way. So it's the exact same team, the exact same team. However, I'm taking out my man. And I'm, oh, Jamie. I'm, I'm, st- I'm, I'm actually starting Kamar Roof. I'm starting oh. Kamar Roof. The, the, re- the reason behind that is, as I said, boys, I think there's going to be a lot of space for us to get the ball down. I think Kamar Roof with the ball at his feet is a lot better. Um, I think he I think he links the play better. I don't mm-hmm. think he's as good a target man. I don't think he puts his weight around as much, but I don't think that's going to be a necessity on Thursday. And I think it's going to be roles reversed. Desert's maybe coming on. But as Ali said, uh, Silver's nailed down that left-hand side spot now. And that was giving me the fear a wee bit about that because I thought, well, he's he's a number nine, the natural replacement for Desert. So that's another... Uh, do you know, mate, we, we've got to think about who's going to come in on the left wing, but he's nailed that down and he's looking to really be enjoying his football now. So I think he's going to be the star man for us on Thursday. Uh, I think he's going to score first um, and I'm going for 2-1 to the Glasgow Rangers throughout the quarterfinals. I can see your argument in Kamar Roof, though. You are right. In terms of dropping deep and linking up play, he is better at it. He is, he's is. he got a better range of passing, I feel, than what right. Dessers has. So I can see your argument there, for sure. I'm shocked, though. I am shocked that you're not playing D9. I am I'm shocked about that. Look, it, it, it you, need to give the, you need to give them the nightmare a rest from time to time. He can't, <laughs> do you know what I mean? he can't, he can't always pull us out of holes, boys. Come on. He can't, he can't always plunder on, can he? Um, he, he texts me earlier saying, Jink, if I put Kamar Roof in, the guys will let me bring the 10 target down to nine. <laughs> Get a wee bit shaky, I think. It's still 10. Yeah, here, here, I, think, I think we should actually put it up to 20. I think we should put it up to 20. <laughs> yeah, 20. Nicky, your team and score prediction, please. Same team, you'll not be surprised. I am going Dessers. I think Jamie does make a brilliant point. I think um, we spoke even even in the game over in Benfica. I think one of the key criteria for Rangers is can they take big moments? Kim Roof again, as that kind of track record of taking big moments, he scored big goals. So I do see that actually if we try and overwhelm them, kind of first half, if you've got one or two chances, who do you want them to for take Kim Roof for? Cyril Dessers, right? It's going to be Kamar Ruth every day of the week. But I do think he will stick with Dessers. Likewise, I also have 2 1. I do think they will score. Um, but I think we'll win 2 1. I'm going to go Tom Lawrence to kick us off again with scoring, same as he done over over there. I don't care who scores as long as we win. That's all I care about. And please, within 90 minutes, because I'm a wee bit like Alistair, I can't cope with extra time and penalties. I can't I can't cope with stuff like that. So, yeah, look, a massive tie. One that we're all absolutely looking forward to. And, uh, yeah, just hope it's a quick day at work tomorrow and then it's uh, and then it's kind of countdown to Highbrooks on, on Thursday evening. That will do us for tonight, gentlemen. Alistair, thank you very much for joining me. No problem. I am off on Thursday as well, so it is. You'll be, 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 bull, you'll be burling by the time I see you then. I won't be burling. I'll have um, a couple of drinks to to help the nervousness before I go to <laughs> before I go to Ibrook. So no, looking forward to two big games for Rangers coming up in the, in the next few games, uh, next few days. Sorry, but I think we've got enough to do at Carney. 
and I just want to I want to hear I'm feeling it at the end with the, oh, yeah. the whole of Ibrox bouncing. So that would be good. But as as always, it is over to you, Rangers. Absolutely. Jamie, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks a lot, boys. Looking forward to Thursday. You'll be, yeah, like Ali said, I'm buzzing for I'm feeling it as well. I'll be giving it loudly, standing on my seat at the end if we win. So looking forward to it. And Nicky, cheers, mate. Thanks for having us, mate. Good to see the boys again. And yeah, I mean, we feel I feel like we say this after every bloody podcast, but it's almost feels like four or five days that could define the season yet again. Absolutely. Uh, and I hope it's one that defines it in the correct way. So yes, we will be back on Thursday with a club reaction pod, win or lose. Uh, we will bring you a reaction, but I am very much hoping you see my very happy face on Thursday after full time. Until then, enjoy the rest of your week. Play up the famous Glasgow Rangers. We are Club at 22, the Rangers podcast. Cheers, everybody.